Welcome everyone. Our case study presentation is about leptomeningeal siderosis. It is a rare condition related to the disposition of hemosiderin in subpial layers of the brain and spinal cord, leading to neural damage. It is attributed to recurrent occult meningeal bleeding. So, as proceed directly to case history, it is a case of 30-year-old man who presented with the chief complaint of bilateral hearing loss. He does not have a past medical history. For the last five years, he starts to complain about bilateral hearing difficulty, which slowly got worse. Audiometric tests revealed a deficit of nerve 8 with the socioneural hearing loss. Otherwise, physical examination, computer tomography, and laboratory tests were normal. So the patient has undergone an MRI study. The axial T2 weighted MRI image corresponding to figure A showed a rim of low signal coating the surface of the brain stem that marked by the yellow arrow as well as the facial, the vestibular and the cochlear nerve that marked by the blue arrow. Likewise, the axial T2 asterisk weighted MRI image corresponding to figure B and C, showed a dark band coating the surface of the superior vermis that marked by the white arrow, the same thing in the interhemispheric fissure and over the sylvian fissure that marked successively by the yellow circle and the blue square. In fact, this hypoantan signal border is related to hemosiderin disposition over central nervous system surfaces. This hemosiderin is secondary to subarachnoid hemorrhage. To distinguish the cause of this subarachnoid hemorrhage, patient has a spinal MRI that revealed an antradural masses that marked by a blue circle probably related to a nerve sheath tima associated with dural ectasia that marked by a yellow triangle. So the diagnosis of leptomeningeal siderosis of central nervous system secondary to spinal neurofibromatosis was made based on MRI findings that the hemosiderin band is coating the brain surface and the cranial nerves, intradural extramedullary mass evoking neurofibroma, the family history of neurofibromatosis type 1 revealed later by interrogatory. The main differential diagnosis were hemorrhagic transformation of cortical infarct, but the high pulse signal is not diffuse such as in hemosiderosis, but localized in infarct territory with restricted diffusion. Neurocutaneous melanocytosis, but the pigmented congenital GNA vis and the in enhanced high signal intensity on T1 involving cortical gyrus can differentiate this entity from superficial hemosiderosis. Cortical laminar necrosis, that is a consequence of oxygen or glucose deprivation of neuron in the cortex of the brain, but hyperintensities in the cortex on T1 weighted image is usually found. In the end, we can take as her message that leptomeningeal siderosis should be kept in mind for cases of neurologic disorder such as gait problems and cranial nerve deficit. T2 asterisk weighted MRI images is the crucial sequence for diagnosis with excellent sensitivity for detecting hemosiderin in central nervous system uh, surfaces. The main cause is a recurrent subarachnoid hemorrhagia. Thus, uh, once leptomeningeal siderosis was found, the central nervous system must be fully explored in order to find the source of repeat subarachnoid bleeding because eradicate this cause is the preferred treatment to halt the progression of disease.